You definitely think she came alone? A couple of her spells reeked with tech. She's working with someone. Okay, hey, speaking of where the hell have you been? We see a closer look at Willow as she concentrates on Amy. She doesn't look back at Buffy as she answers. Yeah, it's been a funky time. We'll get into it. Buffy steps closer to Willow, looking up to where her friend is floating a foot or so off the ground. For the first time, Willow looks back toward her, but doesn't stop working her mojo on Amy. Well, how you been? How's Kennedy? Are you still? She died. Buffy's hands fly up to her mouth in panic. Willow drops to the floor and puts her hands up to explain when she sees Buffy's reaction. Willow. Oh no, she's fine. Mystical thing. Only lasted a month. We're just taking it slow for a while. She's sort of in her own space, but it's cool. I always tell that wrong. Buffy smiles as Willow goes on. Seems like things are hopping here. Same old. Except for Donnie. She's definitely not my mama's little girl anymore. Yeah, what'd she do? Bona thrice wise? Some point shortly thereafter, Xander walks into the dungeon. We see him standing in the door, already speaking as he steps in. Place is more or less locked down. Can I get a sit rep on Rat Girl before... Xander sees what he has walked in on. Willow and Buffy are hugging with joy, laughing loudly at some story Buffy has been sharing. Oh no. No. And I was covered in it. Covered. Wait, what, a bunny? There's fun homie happening here, and I want in. Xander walks closer to them, curious and excited. Buffy and Willow start to settle down. Willow standing with her arm around Buffy's shoulder as the Slayer catches her breath. No. <laughs> it's a girl thing. Girl thing? With girl parts? Oh, now I really need to know. Slow years, and In the next image of them, Xander is crossing his arms defensively. As Buffy speaks, she brings her fingers back up to her lips thoughtfully. Willow is looking at Xander with a look of amusement. Oh, I'm getting plenty of action, Alphaba. I am Action Jackson. Slow year. I said that. God, my dream. Hey, I believe. You're the biggest ladies' man in Sunnydale, Harris. I even won in for the smoochies, and I don't truck with the stubbly crowd. Xander turns his head down in embarrassment. Willow has a much similar awkward look. Both might be reacting to Buffy's expression. She's just thought of an important question. Well, of course, according to my parents, the action I'm getting now should make my other eye go blind. Hey, who kissed me? Hold up, guys. I'm getting a reaction. Says Willow, changing the subject. The image changes to see Willow looking over at the unconscious Amy. Willow's magic is flowing again in green waves from her hands. Let's see where you've been hanging out. Around Amy's head, images appear of men in metal suits, images probably from the army base. <laughs> Girls, I'm pretty sure that's not the kingdom of the fairy folk. A military installation? Ugh, if the initiative is back. The view changes to show Willow's face in close-up. Buffy behind her and Xander behind them. All three are staring at something changing around Amy in front of them. Now why does this remind me of a cavern? This is a portal. Suddenly we see Amy's eyes snap open. They are black like Willow's have turned in the past. She appears to have been feigning asleep throughout. An instant later, we see Amy leaning back, still restrained but grinning victoriously into a blue-white tunnel of magical energy. Willow is dragged helplessly after her, her legs kicking out into the air. It's a trap! Buffy reacts instantly, leaping toward the tunnel to follow, but it has already closed. The witches are gone. Buffy flies through the space they disappeared and crashes into the wardrobe by the wall, shattering it. Xander also leaps into action. In close-up, he shouts instructions into the Bluetooth he wears. I need mystics in the basement level now. We need a portal reopened. Alpha team, suit up and stand by. And where are my mystics? Buffy sits up in the fragments of the wardrobe. Her face looks beyond angry. We're being plagued, Xander. I'm not liking it. Far away in the military base, Willow is lying on a metal table. She is restrained, seemingly by magic, at both ankles, both wrists, and around the neck. A cart next to the table has all sorts of bladed tools. Amy's voice is heard as Willow tries to get a look at her surroundings. Great, big, all-powerful, Earth Mother Witch Goddess. Amy is shown leaning in menacingly over Willow as she continues to mock. And she still falls for a rope -a Willow's face grows angry as Amy continues her speech. Of course, we're contracted to bring in the Slayer, but I'm pretty sure she'll so too late, of course. We? We see into the room from close to Willow's point of view. There's a man in the shadow of the room. His voice is presented as being distorted, somehow inhuman. This is clearly Amy's boyfriend, finally ready to join in the proceedings. I can't tell you how long I waited for this. Well, actually, I can. To the hour. Killing Bobby Summers is gonna be a party. She pissed me off more than a little. A close-up on Willow shows her eyes widen. She clearly recognizes Amy's boyfriend as he steps into view. But you, Rosenberg. The next image is of the man who's been speaking. He's a walking nightmare. 
All we can see are blood and muscle, for the man does not have any skin. Warren? It's Warren Mears, of course, the man Willow flayed and murdered almost three years earlier. He's leering liplessly over her, and he's holding a shining saw in his hand, surely ready to do the unspeakable things to the captured witch. You really got under my skin. Cast. Nicole Kugler as Amy. Troy Finissi as Andrew. Tina Warren as Buffy Summers. Dakota Warren as Dawn Summers. Amy Price as the demon. Troy Finissi as Ethan Rain. Breach Outfield as Giles. Melope Zuckerman as Renee. Joshua Price as Warren Mears. Danner as Willow. And Joshua Price as Xander. Television for the Blind is a non-profit network. We do not own these characters, scripts, or otherwise, and are seeking no credit for them. Our only goal is to give blind people the same leisure of enjoying modern media as others in the This is Josh Price, and we hope you enjoy this presentation of The Long Way Home Part 3, narrated for you by Amy Price.